Hello, everyone. I'm Shruti Kumtekar, Marketing Manager at Close. Thank you for joining us in our Close monthly webinar. Today, we will be discussing software asset management on the ServiceNow platform. Here's the agenda. I'm going to take a couple of minutes to go through housekeeping, talk about Close, followed by our presentation, and finally, Q&A. Now, this webinar will be recorded, and you will be able to access it later. For any uh, questions and answers, you're on mute. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A section in your Zoom control panel, and our panelists will address them. If you have any questions that are not directly related to the webinar, please email me at shruti at closing.com or sales at closing.com. Our social media channels are listed here, and you can access our previous webinars at our Close YouTube channel. Next slide, please. A little about Close. We are a ServiceNow partner since 2011. They're based out of Santa Clara, very close to the ServiceNow headquarters. We are a full ServiceNow shop uh, with 250 plus customers, about 400 plus implementations, 45 plus consultants, and we've been executing projects globally. In terms of services, uh, we provide end-to-end -end services. Our focus has been on customer service management, uh, HRSD, and user portals, and we have do been doing a lot of work on software and asset management as well. Next slide, please. Okay. Our panelist today is Larry Herman. Larry, thank you so much, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this webinar. And you can go ahead now. Thanks, everyone, uh, and, and thanks, Shruti. Um, great setup. Thanks for spending some time with us to talk about uh, this very important topic. Um, just uh, some quick information about why I'm here. Um, I've had over 25 years of IT experience. I hate to admit that because um, it basically means I'm old. Um, been working on multiple ServiceNow implementations uh, beginning with some of one of their very first uh, in 2005. I've also been on the customer side as a product owner in several global enterprises. Um, my first ITIL based project was before there was a service now back in 2003. Um, I am currently certified uh, through service now for the SAM Pro implementations. Um, and have had multiple SAM hardware inventory and other implementations, both as a, a ServiceNow customer um, as well as a consultant. So um, I've felt the pain from the customer side when the CIO or the CFO comes in and starts asking about um, license costs and its licenses that we can't find. Um, I've been in those shoes. Um, always like to start off with a quick quote. Um, one of my heroes is uh, Deming. Uh, you probably know him from Plan, Do, Check, Act, uh, Lean, and Kaizen, um, supposedly, and that's why this uh, little tilde is here. Um, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. So oftentimes, if you walk into the CIO's office and say, well, I think we're good on our true ups. That's an opinion. Um, and that's uh, part of the problem. So let's take a look at the problem a, a little bit. Basically, uh, our publishers are not always our friends, frequently changing licensing schemes. Um, if you've been in IT long enough, you know how Microsoft has handled that. Uh, even ServiceNow is changing licensing schemes as they grow and go forward. Um, there's a lack of accountability for renewals or negotiations. Um, you don't want to find out that something has um, gone out of renewal. Uh, the, re the subscription has ended when you call for support and you're asked to produce a credit card. That's not good. Um, so many SaaS and other online solutions make it easy to have other departments uh, besides IT go around the purchasing process and just sign up for something. And oftentimes then IT doesn't learn about it until um, two things happen. Either it gets uh, time to pay for renewals and they want IT to pay for it, or it's time for support in some form and they want IT to support it. 
Um, something that people don't realize now are also BYOD. Um, and bring your own device can present um, not only problems of managing the software on their devices, but you'll get requests for uh, downloading corporate software onto mobile devices and managing that uh, in conjunction with your mobile uh, asset management can be a major pain. We know about expanding regulatory controls and audits. We've probably all had one of those dreaded letters from a major publisher that says, we think you may be out of compliance. Um, lack of authoritative policies. We'll be talking a lot about the tool that we have uh, to manage all of this, but one of the first things you really wanna look at are there authoritative policies on acceptable use, on how you're going to manage your software licensing, on purchasing. Is finance gonna just pay for somebody who expenses a software subscription? There are a lot of authoritative policies that may come into play. Some background, uh, it's expensive. It's um, this last uh, Gartner uh, survey that I was able to dig up. Organizations spend 332 billion or more on software and that was in 2016. Uh, a frequently quoted Gartner statistic is that about 20% of IT's budget is devoted to software. Uh, and according to one of their senior research analysts at the Gartner Group, um, cost savings between 5% and 35% um, by implementing software asset management. Um, and the average falls pretty much in the middle and that widespread is based on the maturity of your software asset management processes. But even if you just get started, um, you could realize a 5% savings. So when we talk about this, as well as overall IT uh, asset management, it's one of those processes that is truly a life cycle process. Um, you'll see some parts of the uh, components of that life cycle in green. That's often where our software asset management stops. Um, we have a plan for it. We figure out how to request uh, and get our users to request software. There's probably gonna be some kind of approval and possibly a chargeback for that software. And then uh, we work with finance to get our approved sources for that software. And then we forget about all those other things, the allocations, the management of those uh, entitlements or licenses, the ongoing support, uh, the sunsetting of software. Um, what happens when you get the, the end of life notice for a piece of software. Um, and so the four components in the middle are really the components of the asset management tool. Discover what you have out there, normalize your data so you can make sense of it, reconcile your data so you know where you're compliant and not compliant, and then take steps to remediate it. So it really is that entire life cycle uh, that we wanna talk about and we wanna keep on the roadmap and not just stop at, well, we sourced it, we installed it on somebody's computer, now we can forget about it. SAM maturity uh, has been broken down into four tiers. These tiers are um, from ISO uh, and they're uh, SAM uh, specifications, uh, ISO 19774, which was just uh, updated in 2017. Um, and ServiceNow has also adopted this in their implementation scheme for SAM so that, you know, the base of it really is that trustworthy data. Um, many times, and I've, I've had this happen in my IT life, where you get a letter we have SCCM or we have Big Fix or we have some other discovery tool, but somebody says, I just don't trust the data. So we're gonna to have to go to a third party to uh, see if we're compliant or not. That costs a lot of money. So that trustworthy data is where we really wanna start looking both at our process and our tools. So you know what you have and then you can manage it. Um, then you move into practical management. Uh, 
These are the routines and SAM procedures to keep this an ongoing process. Uh, any asset management is not a one and done. It really is something that is um, a life cycle of itself. So you have to have that practical management of keeping SAM active, keeping the data trustworthy. And then you can jump up to tier three, uh, which is the operational integration. This is now where you're reaching into related processes. So you can relate this to the service catalog or your request fulfillment processes. You can reach out to legal and relate it to uh, contracts and contract renewals and use your contract module within ServiceNow to help guide that process. Finally, you wanna reach up to tier four where you can take the big view and that's where you're aligning with corporate goals and objectives. You're aligning with cost savings. Um, you're showing a proactive way of managing all of these. But uh, what happens is people get uh, a notification either from the C-suite or from the CIO or from someone else that says, we gotta do this. And so they wanna do it in a big bang uh, foundation rather than just, okay, let's, let's make sure we have trustworthy data and go on from there. So when we do jump over and take a look at the tool, that's something uh, that really is built into the tool as well. Who's gonna manage all of this? There are various roles in the process and, and I'm not talking about ServiceNow security roles. These are the process roles. So the overall process owner, and something I've said for a long, long time is if you don't have a process owner, don't have a process. You have to have that high level point of accountability, um, someone to make it a strategic reality, keep it on the roadmap. Then you have the asset manager or managers um, that are working out the day-to-day -day details, looking at the dashboards, um, really kind of going through and making sure that your ongoing processes and procedures are working. The administrator, uh, this is probably the point where you're looking at your entitlement records, at your software models, at your reconciliation results, um, all of that. Um, and then you need to reach out to the service catalog manager because now with SAM Pro in ServiceNow, there's a new way of populating the software products um, that will show. Uh, procurement, um, again, if you are looking at SAM Pro to help in the procurement process, you're going to want to be able to take that service catalog request, look and see if there are existing entitlements uh, for that title being requested. If not, then you want to make sure that you're tracking the purchase of it, the receipt of it, and making sure that those uh, titles being received are added into your entitlement records. So you have an ongoing accurate count of your licenses, entitlements, and software usage. Um, and then your contract manager. Again, this may be outside. Um, contract management is often handled through legal. Um, but at some point you want uh, access to um, the latest version of the approved contracts. So you can manage those contracts and the renewal dates um, and going forward with that, making sure that you can um, take a look at that because oftentimes uh, legal may see a software contract, especially from a SaaS provider uh, or a cloud provider um, that has gone, let's say from marketing up to legal, legal did it, um, approved it, uh, redlined it, got it uh, edited and approved and IT has been out of the whole loop. So you need to reach out and make sure that you're at least documenting all of the software contracts um, that are in your environment. When we talk about authoritative policies, one of the things we're talking about uh, within those guidelines, um, again, you want a single process. This may be um, modifiable for local procedures, but you want people to be able to go to a single uh, policy and, and you want your team to be able to use a single process 
Um, doesn't necessarily mean a single tool, especially in discovery, but you want that single process. And you need to define acceptable use of software. Uh, if your uh, environment says everybody can download what they want, um, that's going to be on security, not on you, but um, chances are you're not in an environment that allows that. So you need that acceptable use uh, as part of your policy. You need to have some controls. So people, when they ask, why are you reclaiming this? Um, I used it 91 days ago. Um, that you can put those controls and, and show them the policy. Again, that can uh, also include that approved software um, or the blacklisted software. Um, again, it, this is all backing up your operations within SAM. The purchasing and approval process and a matrix. So um, you know if it's going to be a chargeback or if a department has to approve costs, you have that documented, that it doesn't just all fall on IT. Um, that RACI chart is very important as well. The whole license and contract approval and maintenance, um, reaching out to legal and making sure they have uh, a say in how you're managing that, uh, as well as calling out usage and removal criteria. So you may want to memorialize. If you decide you're going to remove software that has been unused for 60 days or more, then put it in the policy so that people can easily refer to that and, um, and not have that back and forth. And finally, the key metrics. Um, the metrics that are going to drive SAM and compliance. And the one thing I will say is that if you're looking at metrics that you can't take action upon, don't have that metric. Metrics and reports should be actionable. And part of that is um, from the tool and the dashboards where you can take uh, kind of real time look at things. And part of that is going to be um, what actions you're gonna take when you see something. What are the triggers that you're going to set? Um, and make sure that your reports and your dashboards reflect those actionable metrics. So, like I said, I'm an old guy. I've been in it for 25 years. I can tell you that uh, software asset management is not easy. It's not easy to introduce into an environment. It's not really easy to maintain because it has uh, its real uh, kind of fingers in so many different pies, to use an old expression. Um, and you really want to make sure that you do have your fingers in all those different pies. But Again, you want to focus on the value of SAM and not necessarily the cost of those licenses for either SAM Pro or a discovery tool or any of the other uh, costs that may be involved. You want to focus on the value of this, especially initially. And then when you have um, your first couple of quick wins through SAM, you also then want to jump into and make sure that you can show ongoing value of the process. So you've got the potential risks of being uh, audited and being out of compliance. And those fines are not cheap. Uh, opportunities for reuse of licenses. How many times does someone leave an organization their PC uh, gets uh, harvested, it gets wiped, it gets re-imaged, but nobody updates software counts or license entitlements, or that PC just sits in an empty cubicle uh, waiting for a replacement employee. So there's some real opportunity for reuse of licenses rather than always buying single uh, licenses when it comes up. That means that you can work with the service catalog and purchasing to um, make that process so that you can look at entitlements available through the service catalog, not ne just necessarily buy something. Um, and then if you're looking uh, at license and contract renewals, um, you have the potential of really looking for potential savings. Um, maybe you don't need uh, as many uh, CALs as you have right now, or maybe this drives to a better discount because you have more usage coming up. So the, the value of SAM, um, it, it really spreads out 
Um, and again, Sam is a business and a finance um, proposition with um, a technology-based solution. So that's enough slides right now. So I'm going to take just a moment, switch my screen around, and uh, we'll jump into the ServiceNow SAM Pro tool. Give me just one. Okay. So um, there are many tools for the inventory, uh, everything from ServiceNow's own discovery tool, uh, SCCM, um, IBM's Big Fix. Um, there are uh, any number of uh, discovery tools, inventory tools that are uh, compatible. What ServiceNow has done is, uh, especially with SCCM, built some uh, integrations already into the tool because of the market share that SCCM has. Um, I've also seen uh, Jamf, uh, uh, Casper tool for um, Mac. Um, there's both a, a standalone version of that and a plugin for SCCM. Um, we've made it work with Big Fix. So um, really most of that inventory is tool independent. Um, and one of the beauties of ServiceNow is uh, through one pr protocol or another, you're going to be able to bring that data in. Um, there are some dependencies on SCCM for your reclamation, um, but otherwise it's tool independent. Okay. Anything else? Uh, there was another question specifically uh, where the person asked, is Slow going to recommend a tool solution? A tool solution for discovery? Uh, no. Um, and, and there's a reason for that. We can work with you if, if and we have worked with clients that have had that question. Um, uh, many uh, of, of those uh, clients then have um, something already in place and it may not be working. So we've, I just got uh, finished with a, a group that basically did not get rid of SCCM, but just basically rebuilt it and we started the data uh, inventories from scratch. So. Um, we can work with you on that, um, but a lot of that will come from uh, especially your infrastructure teams uh, within IT. Okay, so there's a clarification saying that uh, this is, they're asking this for SAM, and is this SAM Pro for, uh, for ServiceNow? Yes, so that tool, uh, we really do um, recommend, and even personally, I recommend the, the new SAM Pro. Um, that came out a, a, as a separate application in Jakarta. Um, I used the SAM that is part of um, the regular uh, ITSM tool within ServiceNow. Uh, I've used uh, products from BMC um, and, and some others. Um, but what I found was once they came out with SAM Pro, it really is because it's now on a single platform and I can use that data in change management. I can use that data in onboarding and offboarding. Um, uh, I, I really stress that ServiceNow uh, with the SAM Pro tool uh, is among the bigger players in the SAM marketplace. Still lots of other tools out there um, but I really think if you're already on a ServiceNow platform for, especially for ITSM, uh, it makes sense to really then look at SAM Pro, which is what we're about to do. Yeah, and those are all the questions we have for now, Larry. I think you can proceed with the demo. Great. So hopefully now you can see my screen and I apologize for that hiccup. Um, and what I've got up uh, is uh, an out of the box. This is a, a, a development instance. This is on London. Um, if there are features that we talk about that are here in London, but not in Kingston or Jakarta, I will call those out. Um, and I have not done any uh, modification to the out of the box. This is uh, just the out of the box, the out of the box demo data, um, 
So this has not been customized for this webinar, uh, which is often a question I as a customer would ask is, uh, how much tweaking have you done? And if you've ever gone into a stereo store and listened to some really nice speakers, that's one of the questions you ask is, how much um, tweaking have you done on the receiver or the amplifier? So just for full disclosure, this is all out of the box. And one of the nice things I really like is um, their use of these dashboards. These dashboards are, as you can see, like our old list views, they are uh, drilled down, but they give you those really quick um, position looks where you are and even with some trending. So Sam Pro, um, another reason I like it over the original Sam, which is now Sam Foundations, um, it has some uh, plugins to performance analytics um, that are part of the Sam Pro license. So you get some of these trending um, without having to set up performance analytics or customize everything. Um, you notice uh, the other thing that uh, really helps is that Sam Pro comes with uh, publisher packs. And as I said, uh, in uh, London, that includes uh, Citrix uh, and Adobe. Uh, but uh, from Kingston and Jakarta, you get Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and VMware. So you can drill down specifically into your licensing and entitlement positions um, based on that. And again, when you activate those uh, publisher packs as part of Sam Pro, these are, are what you get, as well as potential integrations into these publishers um, licensing portals. So really nice. Um, you notice here, uh, even though I said in London there's Adobe, um, because they've built in those, um, those links to the Adobe Cloud and the Office 365 Cloud, I can pull out my subscriptions based on that. And just as proof that I haven't modified this, for some reason I've got uh, something going on in the background. Um, but again, um, here's where I'm pulling in those cloud subscriptions from my Adobe, from my Microsoft, um, right in um, into a dashboard. Really like that. Um, but enough of the bells and whistles. Really what we're talking about, again, going back to those four tiers, you really want to take a look at um, establishing that trustworthy data. And we do that in SAM Pro through software entitlements, software models. Um, these two are new to London, where um, if you are transitioning, let's say you were on Snow and you have a lot of your entitlement data that you've exported from Snow, um, but you wanna bring it in. Now there's some import capability here, as well as some pre-built reports on any of the errors from that import. Um, the key to our, our data, um, in the older SAM foundation, the key was the entitlement records and building counters and doing a lot of manual. The key to our, our uh, initial trustworthy data foundation is the new software model. And software models are basically going to tell you uh, what you need to know about that specific software title. So I have a model here that is uh, Adobe Acrobat DC Professional. Um, it's normalized to the Adobe systems because of that publisher pack. So somebody doesn't go in and just write uh, Adobe or Adobe Inc. Um, and then you get all kinds of different reports on your reconciliation. Um, it's normalized on the product. Um, you could add normalization on the type and the classification. Um, here's the discovery mapping. So uh, when you do that inventory um, as part of the software and the publisher pack, you will have some of this discovery mapping already. Um, which is also a part of the normalization process. 
um, and then you can customize that. Uh, and when it finds something that isn't already mapped, it will automatically create a discovery map. And then you can go into that discovery map and start normalizing it uh, through the discovery tool. Um, you can then build some conditions. Um, and here's what I really, really like is I can certify this and say, yes, this is an official title, or I can blacklist it and say, nope, we're not using this anymore. There still may be some older uh, installations of this out there, but it is now considered blacklisted, which means that um, when I do my reconciliation, it's going to show as a blacklisted title. And we'll talk about what that uh, can do for you. If uh, it's part of a suite, uh, and it's part of a suite from one of those publisher packs, that information is going to be here, but you can then build in um, the information if you're bundling a suite um, and take that information on how much of the components, how many of the components in a percentage uh, are required to call it a part of that suite, and then what the components are from that suite or if you're talking about an individual package, you can relate it up to a parent suite. And here's the part I really, really like. So in the, I, I, I shouldn't say, in previous versions before SAM Pro, you still had to work on a separate product catalog. Here, I can go in and build my product catalog right from uh, within the software model. So you notice because this came as part of the uh, profile or publisher pack, um, it has that information built in, but I can go in and edit it, um, make it look however I want it to look uh, in the software catalog, uh, add the picture. Um, we're all pretty familiar with uh, ServiceNow uh, service catalogs and how they present pictures of the items as well. So I can do that all within here and it links over into the product catalog, um, which is a really nice tool. Also new in London, I can associate this with uh, a life cycle, um, which is especially important if uh, we're, we're discovering older software and we know end of life date or end of support date, um, what phase is it in the life cycle, um, all of that can be uh, managed through here. Um, some of these others, if there are related knowledge articles, uh, you can build a, a software model around all of that. Um, the nice thing is that uh, when you do your discovery and when you activate your publisher packs, a lot of this information is going to get pulled in. But as part of that software um, discovery phase and trustworthy data phase for your tier one, there's still going to be some oversight to make sure that it's reporting the way you want, it looks the way you want. Um, so it's not to say that you can just turn this on, automate it, and never think about SAM uh, again. The second key component uh, to this are your entitlements, which are we used to call rights or licenses. So basically our entitlements are here's uh, what we have, Here's the kind of metric. Uh, it's a device CAL. It's a full license. We have active rights uh, right now of 600. We've purchased 600. There's our cost. So if we wanted to look at the record itself, um, here's where we can go in. Um, you can assign it an asset tag. And, and many of the companies we work with are just doing this for internal tracking. Um, there may be, again, publisher part number that comes through from that publisher pack. The metrics are how it's going to be counted. So, um, for instance, this one's a device cal. You may have uh, license metrics that are based on core, virtual cores, uh, device, procs, users, all of this information is available. And again, in the publisher packs, that information's pulled down for you. Uh, what type of agreement do you have over this licensing? Is it a generic, just kind of, here's our agreement, 
or does it relate to an enterprise license agreement? Here's again, and you see it, it's grayed because this is coming from somewhere else. Uh, license type, um, if it's owned by anybody um, outside of IT, you can add that information in. Um, if you're doing chargebacks or showbacks, uh, which are basically, here's how much your department cost IT and software, you can pull in all of this information. This will also become handy when it's time to renew. Um, and here's where you can relate it to those contracts uh, and relate it to what groups are supporting it. Uh, you may be familiar with this in, um, in configuration management in the CMDB. Now you can also, in software, assign those support groups or who it's supported by. So it's really handy um, to get this in. As I said, there are new tools in London to import that information if you've already captured it, or as a lot of places do, um, manage the entitlement information in a spreadsheet. Um, in this import, there's a spreadsheet template that you can use um, to get that information in uh, without having to do a lot of, some of you may be used to uh, transformation mapping, importing, um, coalescing. Um, they've tried to take some of that pain away. So these two areas, modeling and entitlements, are going to form the key to your um, trustworthy data. And in the time we have, I'm not going to go into the discovery or the inventory uh, setup. Uh, it is not uh, I do want to clear up, it is not dependent on ServiceNow's discovery tool. Uh, if you already have SCCM, if you already have some other tool in place, um, we can integrate with that as well. Once we get all that data, now uh, this is also very handy, is our reconciliation. This is where we're going to start seeing our compliance position. Uh, something new to London is also the license position report. Um, this is a quick look, especially uh, if you're integrating with change management and let's say they're going to um, expand the use of something so they need new licensing. Um, you can go in and take a quick look at the position report and see where you are. So you notice it's, it's set up almost like uh, the SLAs where you can see where you're compliant not compliant right off the bat um, and get some of that information, uh, especially as it relates to any true up costs um, based on your licensing and, and those. Um, but overall, what happens is reconciliation is one of those jobs that will be uh, defined on when you run it and how you run it. And then you'll get a, a reconciliation result record. So you can see exactly when that reconciliation was run um, and any of the other uh, conditions that ran on that particular uh, reconciliation. And so very specifically on the 28th, uh, we ran a, a reconciliation job and here's what it found. And then I can uh, look at the product result, look at the product itself, um, start looking at what this is all going to cost me. And uh, then I can also very quickly start setting up some of the reconciliation uh, constraints. If I want to add conditions, I can say, um, I'd really like to just run it on Microsoft. Um, I want to run it based on cost center. I don't really worry about a subgroup. If I continue, it will run a reconciliation um, based on this. So if I get a letter from Microsoft or I'm about to go into negotiations for my true up, I can now start looking very specifically without having to do a whole lot of backend scripting to run a reconciliation. Another uh, feature of SAM Pro that's very handy is um, both usage uh, and uh, reclamation. So um, 
at the end, if, if we still have time, we'll take a look at some of the uh, admin tools to set up these uh, usage and reclamation rules. But um, this is now uh, really handy. So I've looked at things. I've, I know I've set up some usage rules. And now um, it's automatically said, OK, these removal candidates have been identified and what's happening. So when you see a state of awaiting user, um, reclamation can happen in a couple of ways. You can automatically reclaim something and just say, oh, we found something, let's say, on the blacklist. We're going to pull it. Or we can say, we're going to send a notification uh, five days beforehand and send a reminder a uh, day beforehand. Um, and maybe then they say, oh, OK, um, we'll go ahead and pay the money or go ahead and pull this. I needed it only for a project. When it's ready, that means it's waiting for that reclamation job to run. And then um, you can go through um, some titles may have been set up for approvals. So there's lots of ways of reclaiming the titles that you, um, you find um, either based on usage, based on the blacklist. And so you can see those are the overall reclamation candidates. But here are candidates. Uh, we found these instances of Age of Empires. They're blacklisted. That's why we're going to reclaim them. And you see there's no uh, awaiting approval or awaiting user. It's just awaiting that revocation job. So. Um, really nice feature of going through, even if it's blacklisted, you build the software model um, for it. You, you check that box for blacklisting. When it runs its reconciliation, it's going to set up that uh, reclamation job and just wipe them out. So here you're worried about blacklist. You're not worried about license counts or compliance. You just want that software out. Um, as I said, you can set up discovery. And here are those discovery models um, and some of the normalization that you can use um, in the discovery models themselves. So uh, again, these models are either from the publisher pack or when um, your discovery tool finds something, uh, software that doesn't have a discovery model already, it will just create one of these its status would be not normalized. And then you can um, run a report, see those that are not normalized, and go in and see what's, what's going on with those. Um, again, you're going to find uh, in my last corporate position when we did uh, our first discovery run, we found about 1,200 titles that we did not have on anybody's spreadsheet. So we did some normalization. That brought it down to under 1,000 based on various versions and other data normalization. Um, but uh, again, it's another handy way of going in and saying, OK, we found it. We want to keep looking for it, but we want to normalize this data. So you may get some normalization uh, suggestions. This, again, uh, is part of London. Uh, and is based on the ServiceNow content services that we're just about to talk about. So under admin, now we're getting into um, really your practical ongoing management as well as um, some of your integration with other processes. So you can build custom products, um, custom metrics. Let's say you've built software. Uh, I just saw this in the construction industry where a group has built software and license it out. Um, so they're building a custom uh, metric for that, a custom product record for that. Here's where you can set your reclamation rules based on usage. Um, take a look at your job results, make sure your jobs are running properly. Uh, any errors from those. And here's the content service um, that I did want to cover. And I know we're getting close to our question and answer time, but this is a, a big thing that we get a lot of questions about. The content management service is really uh, ServiceNow uh, and its work with, with its customers and with its partners 
have a lot of that publisher content already. So once a month, they will push down um, anything new as far as patterns, anything new as far as um, product or anything else. And to be a part of that so that you're pushing up some of your information, um, you can opt into it. So out of the box, um, you are not a part of the content uh, service, but you will get uh, the content pushed down to you monthly. Um, if you opt in, it's going to tell you to what uh, degree of information you're going to share back up. And you can see that you can turn this on and off. So any of the new discovery models that you keep and normalize uh, from your environment, um, you can share. Any of the new software uh, life cycles that you're um, applying to your software models, um, and it will look and say, okay, this model is, this life cycle model is not already in service now, so we're gonna send it up for them to review, and maybe it's something they add in their content sharing. The various part numbers and discovery maps, um, and what's really interesting is processor names, because so many, um, especially enterprise licensing, uh, are related to processors, whether it's virtual processors or physical processors or cores, um, you can share that information up as well. And then um, again, it's like any other shared resource, the more information that ServiceNow gets, the more information they can evaluate and push back down. Um, if you decide to turn this on, you can always opt out. And come in and say, okay, I just heard from my security folks. They're really ratcheting down on the information we're sharing. I want to opt out. And you're just back to this. So it's, it's really painless. Um, also, if you opt in, you can go in by product. If I go back to discovery. See if I've got one that um, shows that. Um, that one didn't because it's on the blacklist. Sorry. Um, I don't know why, but there's an, an area here in the discovery models where um, you probably saw that pop really quickly. It would say exclude from content services. So in that instance where you have some self-developed or a third-party developed software that's proprietary or exclusively for you, um, individually without having to opt out of the content service, you can opt out of that title and that discovery map from ever being shared up uh, to ServiceNow. So it really adds some flexibility if you choose to take um, part in the content services. Um, again, you can go through um, software install migration if you are using some of the older uh, ServiceNow tools. You, there's a path to migrate um, some of that information up. What we're seeing is a lot of people just want to start fresh. Um, and then again, uh, like any other application, you get some of your uh, various administration tools that you can do. Um, and contract procurement, your integrations, um, kind of out of the box, they're more configuration rather than customization in SAM Pro. So um, again, uh, contract um, module isn't a requirement for software uh, administration or software asset management, but it's uh, oftentimes added in because you're finding all of those contracts to get your, your uh, current entitlements anyway. Um, and there is that software model uh, contract in the contract application. So we often say, just go ahead and use it. Um, and at that, uh, I've reached the point where um, we've got enough time, I think, for some question and answers. So we do have a few questions here, Larry. Okay. Um, 
So is there any integration for ServiceNow with other systems like SAP? Uh, so some information could be integrated from SAP like company, user, or vendor information. Yes, absolutely. So um, there's a new tool called the Integration Hub um, that simplifies that, that came out in Kingston, I believe. Um, and I've seen that integration with just about everything except there are some proprietary financial systems that require some more in-depth scripting to integrate. But absolutely, especially for uh, the approved vendor list and, and, and information, um, anything out of you know, Workday, Financials, SAP, uh, Oracle, um, pretty easy integration path. Okay, next question. Do the reconciled reports use usage from SCCM or other tools? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Sure. Do the reconciled reports use usage from SCCM or other tools? Out of the box, it uses the usage reporting from SCCM. Um, and that's where we often work with SCCM teams to, um, to uh, tweak that and make sure there are, uh, they're pulling through SCCM the right information to, to do that. But out of the box, it does pull it from SCCM. Okay, thank you. We have a couple more questions. Can you show an example of a SAM report that would go to C-level execs that paints a picture of the company's overall software licensing status? Sure. Do it right here. <laughs> um, remember, these are almost always built as reports. Um, and, and then shared up. But if I look at my analytics dashboard, here's my overall uh, software summary. So um, I can either take a screenshot of this, um, or as you know, you can- Sorry, I'm sharing your screen. I don't seem to see it. Oh, it stopped sharing. Sorry, because I was switching over to um, PowerPoint. But anyway, yeah, no. can you see it now? Yes, I can see the PowerPoint slides. Okay, let me switch over to. Yes, perfect. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so basically from this license summary under the dashboard, this is that information that I would provide. And depending on how they want to see it, I would then kind of just either take a screenshot of this or go into the root uh, and find the report that's driving it. But it, it's all um, available. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, to use the blacklist or removal option, does this require orchestration? Yes, so the, that's a great question. The uh, removal, the blacklisting does not. The removal um, is a semi-set of orchestration that comes as part of SAM Pro, and it is uh, set to work with SCCM. So uh, if you have SCCM, um, then it's pretty much an out-of-the-box um, matching it to SCCM and driving those jobs to remove the software. Okay, thank you. Um, so attendees, if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, let us know. Uh, we do have five minutes left. Uh, at this point, I would like to inform you that we will be uh, an exhibitor at the ServiceNow Now Summit in the Santa Clara Convention Center next month, October 18th. So um, uh, if you're attending, please do come visit our booth. We would love to meet you. And um, with that, I see we, we're not really getting any more questions at this point. So I oh. just okay, wanted to, Comments, wanted yeah. to finish up with a couple things in the last couple of minutes. Um, one thing about implementation, uh, the key word here is define a reasonable project. 
Um, as you can see, it's not all fully uh, automated. There is some work um, from your SAM team that's going to be involved. Um, we, uh, again, recommend following those four tiers of maturity. You want to make sure you have that top-down commitment throughout the project, uh, especially when you start doing reclamation. Um, the phone calls are going to start coming in. Um, make sure you have those process roles and people understand what roles they have. Um, and bring in the people from those related processes. So it's... Um, it's really a good idea. What we see often is at the very beginning, we'll bring in every stakeholder. And then as we go through the phases, we'll bring in, bring back those stakeholders as we need them. So it's not that somebody's gonna have to be involved 100% for 12 weeks. Um, they may come in for two weeks to, um, to work out how the service catalog is going to be driven from SAM. So a lot of that, uh, really helps getting them involved, um, keeping them updated on your progress of that implementation. And as we said earlier, it is a lot of work. Focus on the value. Don't just focus on the cost. Um, that's easy to do. Remember your reduced risk, your trustworthy data, um, reduce costs through the reclam reclamation, all of those play a part in your ongoing value. So you're gonna have some quick wins and see your true up costs and be able to address those, but you're gonna have some ongoing value as well. And remember, um, I'm paid to say this, but uh, I really believe this, we can help. Uh, we've done a lot of this. And here's some of that contact information that Shruti was uh, talking about. And so I'll turn it back over to her. Yes, thank you, Larry, and uh, thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar. Uh, we hope this was helpful for you, and uh, we'll see you next month for our next close webinar. Thank you, and have a nice day. Thanks, everyone.